Hi, I'm George, and today's 5-minute flash film is going to discuss how I set up the solar on my Xterra. Under traveling conditions, or when parked at home, there's a single 100-watt solar panel mounted to the hood, and the charge controller maintains the battery. However, when base camping, there's a second panel stowed inside the truck that can be easily deployed to double up on the power production capability. So, what goes into a portable solar system? The solar panel captures energy from the sun and converts it to electricity. That electricity flows to a charge controller. The charge controller controls the voltage and prevents the current backflow into the panel when the sun stops shining on the panel. When the sun is shining on the panel, all of this power has to go somewhere, and it either goes to a load, or to the battery, or both. If both are not taking current, then the charge controller limits current and controls the charge, hence the name charge controller. Some charge controllers even control the load. Some, however, are meant to feed the battery and don't manage loads. The advantage to the type that controls the load is if the battery voltage gets too low, the charge controller turns off the load to protect the battery. And to add to the confusion of charge controllers, there are two different types of technologies, MPPT and PWM. The MPPT charge controller is a higher quality charge controller and will take better care of your battery. It will also provide more power from the panel to your battery and downstream loads. What these abbreviations stands for don't really matter. Now let's look at where the charge controller goes. In the initial installation, the charge controller was attached to the battery where it could be monitored. However, it was of poor quality and was replaced by a heavier duty MPPT controller. Nothing fancy, just good solid connections. Before we get to the battery, let's talk about how the solar panel is connected to the charge controller. We have the solar panel on the hood, which is mounted using RV solar panel mounts and secured using 3M VHB tape to the hood. The solar power cables with the M4 connectors go down here. Along the frame rail of the truck, along the frame rail of the truck, along the frame rail of the truck, to the rear wheel well where they penetrate the well. and attached to the charge controller. The output of the charge controller goes to the battery. OMG, what are all these connections? We have the battery monitor. We have the voltmeter, which is useful when casually passing by to get a feel for the battery's condition. This is the input from the charge controller. This is the 12 volt outlet which feeds the electric blanket in the rooftop tent. This powers the fridge. And this is how we connect back to the vehicle start battery and the vehicle alternator. Wait, what? While moving and scooting, the 100 watt solar panel may not be enough to charge the battery from all of the bougie landing antics the previous night, like watching movies and making ice. So this 4 gauge cable and 100 amp fuse are connected to the vehicle battery via this cable along the frame rail through this 100 amp fuse and this manually operated switch. This allows us to connect and charge the second battery off the vehicle alternator. In summary, the solar panel sends power along the body to the charge controller, which regulates power to the battery, which feeds the fridge and the inverter and the ice maker. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and mash that like button.